You might have seen the gameplay trailer for Blight Survival, and I'm guessing you probably have some thoughts and feelings about that scenario, night versus zombies, so let's talk about it. I've seen some people fall in one of two camps when it comes to a knight in a suit of plate. One, it's a slow lumbering behemoth that can barely walk, and two, armor doesn't encumber you at all, you can move perfectly freely in it which probably comes from seeing videos like this, debunking the idea that knights couldn't move properly, they couldn't get up by themselves. People can definitely perform some impressive acrobatic feats and all that, and be quite agile. It does limit your range of movement to an extent, of course, and the main thing is it's pretty draining compared to not moving in armor because you've got all this extra weight packed on you. Um, I've never personally worn a full suit of plate. The closest I've come was a gambeson with arms and legs. That was already quite a significant uh, difference. Now, arguably, having plate armor on your arms and legs is actually the worst. On the torso, it's not so bad because then you you carry the weight on your hips, basically, and it's, it's supported pretty well. Um, moving your arms around in particular with a uh, full plate and gauntlets, yeah, that'll definitely be more exhausting. And the legs in particular, that has quite a significant impact. Of course, being trained from a young age helped mitigate that, and knights would have been used to it. But obviously, somebody in a full suit of plate armor compared to an unarmored or lightly armored individual, they're gonna gas out sooner. You know, assuming the same level of fitness, it's going to be more exhausting and tiring, which of course is a bit of a problem against the untiring hordes that forever pursue you and will never slow down. They may be slow to begin with, but they don't have to worry about stamina. So this is the same sort of experience that Prey would have had in prehistoric times when human hunters basically walk them to death. Because this is what human anatomy does particularly well. We're not the greatest sprinters compared to other animals, but we're amazing in terms of long-term endurance. So, you know, we would keep chasing the animals. They, they keep looking back. Okay, I finally lost them. Oh, they're still there. Hunters would keep going after the prey until it collapses from exhaustion. And that's exactly what zombies would do. Slow and steady wins the race. They may be slow, but they won't give up. They will just keep coming. Unless it's the 28 Days Later style infected rage zombies who keep sprinting toward you, which is even worse. Now, we're talking about knights. So they wouldn't try to run away. They would try to face the threat and fight it. And uh, obviously, knights have a number of highly effective weapons at their disposal. And... Essentially, anything that's designed to be used against armor would annihilate zombies. And without getting the weapon stuck too, which is rather useful. Flanged or spiked maces, war hammers, pole axes, there's a lot to choose from, which would make short work of individual zombies at least. The problem, of course, is the numbers. Now, in Blight Survival, we haven't seen that much of the gameplay, but what we have seen is individual zombies rather than hordes, and the fighting system also seems to be more geared toward one-on-one, -on -one, as opposed to dealing with great numbers, and they seem more like um, classic necromantic zombies, I would say. They use weapons, apparently they don't just shamble toward you and try to grab and bite you. So that's a different story in this kind of scenario. Really, mostly everything applies that applies to one-on-one -on -one armed fighting, except that they're probably less coordinated. They would probably be a tougher, harder to destroy enemy that isn't quite as much of a threat as a um, highly skilled human opponent, which makes for some really cool animations in the game, like this takedown. Uh, for which armor would be a benefit in the sense that you have more mass so you can steamroll people more easily. But I generally don't think going to the ground is a good choice in full armor because even though you're not going to be like a, a bug on its back, you'll be able to get back up. It's 
more exhausting to get back up in armor. You know, every time you stand up all the way from the ground, it's going to take a little bit more energy than it would without armor. So it, it all accumulates over time. And of course, if we're talking multiple opponents, you don't want to go to the ground. In fact, ending up on the ground was a common cause of death for knights on historical battlefields. So if you have this idea that a, a knight in a suit of plate armor is an invincible tank, you know, makes sense why you would think that. But the uh, main issue was on during the chaos of the battlefield, with a lot of bodies involved, if as a knight, you know, you stumble and fall or get knocked down or whatever, and, and your armor protected you, but you end up on the ground and there's maybe other bodies falling on you, piling up on you as people get knocked down or slain or whatever, it may be pretty difficult to get back up, you know, dig yourself out from under that. Historical sources sometimes mention after a battle, knights being pulled out from under all those bodies and often being dead because they suffocated to death or were crushed, you know, particularly if you think about being crushed under the weight of a horse and not being able to get out. Sometimes they would survive, uh, but either way, that's a certain risk. So now imagine a horde of zombies piling up on you. So particularly if you're thinking numbers like in Project Zomboid, <laughs> where like most of the population, if not all of it, is zombified and they're all coming after you. And as you try to get away because you can't fight this huge number, there's more coming from other directions and eventually they'll corner you. That would seem like the most likely way a knight could fall to zombies. Quite literally fall, be knocked over or dragged down, and then buried under bodies and crushed or suffocated by dozens of zombies. Because otherwise they wouldn't really have much of a chance to hurt a knight. The typical scratching or biting and thereby infecting them is very unlikely. Even if you look at an early medieval knight who's wearing mail and a helmet and instead of plate throughout the entire body, what's a zombie supposed to do there? They can't bite through the mail. Uh, if they try to bite the neck, for example, they would most likely just bunch up some rings of mail and get them in their mouths and chip or crack their teeth without really accomplishing anything, especially considering that there would be a gambeson underneath too. So you, you've got the padding, then you've got the mail. That's like too much material even. That would fill the zombie's mouth without even being able to get to the flesh. Um, now, some parts of the body might be more likely to be injured. Like, I would imagine if a zombie happens to get uh, a knight's fingers in the mouth, you know, even with the padding and, and the male rings, an individual finger might still fit in there and uh, might still be crushed. You know, if there's enough pressure on it, clamping down on a finger, it might still be injured or broken even through that. But otherwise, it's extremely unlikely, but of course there would be other potential ways to get injured. Like if uh, several zombies keep pulling on an arm, it's not going to be like the movies where they just, just pull a head off or whatever, but uh, they might dislocate a shoulder perhaps, or otherwise cause damage to tendons, ligaments, joints. Also, the lacings used to attach individual pieces of armor to one another or to the arming doublet underneath, for example, could break from a bunch of hands frantically tugging and tearing at the armor. Straps and buckles can stretch and break, etc. There are definitely plenty of ways to be injured through, you know, blunt impact or, or tearing, pulling. And of course, the 28 days later type infected would be a whole different can of worms if you have like 50 of those sprinting at you very energetically and, and doing whatever, even if they're uncoordinated, even if they don't know how to get past your armor, just them slamming into you and, and burying you under them and, and clawing away at you. Even if you survive, imagine being trapped in your armor under all those zombies that keep pounding away at you. If you can't get up because there are too many of them, then yeah, you're, you're done for one way or another. But again, that's assuming overwhelming odds that you so often see in zombie scenarios in which you can't do anything other than hide or get to a fortified position or something like that. Fortify and 
attack them from a distance. They could have done that in the Middle Ages too, not with guns, but you know, with bows and crossbows and even just throwing rocks, throwing or slinging. Eventually they would run out of projectiles. But uh, you would most likely run into a castle siege scenario where once the drawbridge is up, the zombies can't get to them. And obviously they don't have siege engines. So zombies would have no way to get in there, but that wouldn't make them any less dangerous. In fact, the main danger was during a siege running out of supplies because they just wait you out until your food runs out, disease runs rampant, etc. In my opinion, during a zombie apocalypse that takes place in a present day setting, you would be better off with other options than a reproduction of a full suit of plate armor, um, which sure gives you plenty of protection, but is going to wear you down quite significantly. Um, there are better alternatives with modern materials, you know, like riot armor, which is highly protective as well, and much lighter. Motorcycle gear, I think, would do quite well. It would be a lot lighter, wouldn't uh, exhaust you as much, would provide plenty of protection. And against hordes, being quick and agile and stealthy would probably work better. And uh, again, having more stamina <laughs> to go with, probably also a good thing. So obviously a medieval knight in plate armor would be well protected, would be extremely well armed, and would stand, would have no trouble really with individual zombies or small groups. I mean, they were trained to deal with uh, poorly armed, unarmored hordes. There was always some peasant uprising somewhere to crush, so they were, they had plenty of routine and practice with that. But um, there comes a certain number, a certain threshold where it's just too much, it's just too many, and then they would run to trouble. Anyway, I uh, hope you found this interesting, entertaining. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too rambly. Thanks for watching, and have a good one, folks.